hear these words from Deuteronomy in the sixth chapter. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Let us write. Sometimes for healing, sometimes for celebration. We have a special prayer stall we'll dedicate for Sarah that was baptized today. A special little hat, a nice little blanket for her to remember this day that God may be always be with you as you continue to grow. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this time that we can gather together as your church. For we know, O oh Lord, that so often we're not always in communication with you as we should. But we know, O oh Lord, that you taught your disciples to be able to go and pray. Even before great decisions that you would make, you would go off by yourself and you would pray. Whether you prayed in the wilderness after your own baptism, we know that while you were there, Satan was also there and he came to tempt you in many ways. But each time you were able to say it is written in the word, man does not live by bread alone. Thou shalt not put the Lord to a foolish test. Worship the one true God and serve only him. And evil was able to flee. We pray, Lord, that as we gather in this place today, that you would cast out all evil, just as we said at these baptismal vows. Help us, O Lord, not to be overcome by evil, but transform us and help us to become a new being born through water and the Spirit. Just as we celebrated last week, as we celebrated the birth of your church on Pentecost, we continue to grow in it. It's not a one-time event. Just like baptism is a one-time event that lasts a lifetime, we, with Bill and Joan and others who renewed their baptismal vows this day, we come before you today renewing our commitment to you that we seek holiness. We seek to serve you as the Holy One, and we seek to walk in your ways in holy ways. Help us, O Lord, to go where sinners are, and help us to be able to share your love. For we know, O Lord, that, that you love each and every one of us. Most importantly, that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And so for this, we give you thanks. If what a great day to celebrate. For you tell us that there's no greater joy in heaven than when one sinner comes home. Although that this baby has, has no sin in her at this time, we know, Lord, that she has received a corrupted nature from Adam and Eve from the very beginning. So with this dedication to this child, we pray, Lord, that you would seal and sanctify her with the Holy Spirit, that she may grow to come to have a faith in you. May you bless her parents and all who came to witness this special day, that she may continue to grow in your house and walk in your ways that your word may be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray, O Lord, that you'd help us as we reach out to other children of this community at Vacation Bible School. Help us, O Lord, to do not just a three-day Bible school, but to help us to reach out and invite them to have a lifelong relationship with you. We ask, O Lord, now that you would bless this prayer shawl and the altar and this hat that we will present to Sarah. We thank you for the hands that have knitted together and we pray, O oh Lord, that you would use this gift as a symbolic remembrance of this day, that she may be wrapped and clothed in the Holy Spirit. May you bless this gift and bless her that receives us. Hear us now as you've taught your disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Today is taken from 1 Kings chapter 8 and again respond with the bold colored verses. 
Praise be to the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all of good promises he gave through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us or forsake us. And may he turn our hearts to him, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep the commandments. And may these words of mine which I have prayed before the Lord be near to the Lord our God day and night, that he may uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel according to each day's need. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God, and that there is no other. And may their hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God. And at the reading of God's holy word. Again, for the past uh, several weeks, we have been looking at three simple rules. Just like on the back of my other verse where it says, Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. On this Trinity Sunday, we're looking at three rules that John Wesley gives us do no harm, do good. Stay in love with God. But just like we have our Bible readings, we like to make our sermons interactive. So you just have to repeat one phrase over and over. I know this froze up last time. We tried this, but we'll try it again. But whenever you see this fall down, stay in love with God. That's what you said. When you see that fall out of the sky, let me back it up. Are you ready? When it falls down, you'll say, stay in love with God. When it lands and the dust settles, you say, stay in love with God. Everybody shut Okay, ready? Stay in love with God. So that will happen throughout the sermon. Keep watching for it. All right? And then you get to say, stay in love with God. All right? As we traveled around for Bike Week, you know, there's all kinds of characters out there as, as we ride together and other things that I was able to ride during this past week. But there are signs that we see God all around us. I saw this one bike that was all decked out with different Bible verses. It reminds us, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then also from Romans chapter 5 through 8. But God demonstrated his love for us by this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. All right? We see different images that pop up. As we saw this image of Christ coming out of the, the empty tomb on the same bike. And, and different Christian ministries around. We see these symbols all around it. And I think if Jesus were here today, he would be in the midst of bike week and other things. Not only this week, but next week as well. He would be involved in ministering with different people and sharing his love as we remind people to. Yeah, we're getting it. Alright? You know, as I share with you at my best club today, you know, we like to ride with God. And not only when you're on two wheels, but when you're on four wheels and when we walk through life, we need to go with God. God be with us as we travel and go into the world. As we represent Christ into this world, different symbols represent Him. Bill and Joan just took a pledge and said, I'll be a faithful member of Seminary United Methodist Church. What does that mean? Is that a good thing? You know, what are we becoming a part of? We're becoming a part of the one universal church of Christ as we go into the world. And it's something we want to proudly wear. It's not something we want to hide. We want to be able to show. When I was having my patch thrown on, and they said, do you want it on your back? Or do you want it on the front? He said, no, we want it out there in the front. right? We don't want to hide it where people can't see it when you're sitting down on your bike. You want it to be the first thing that they see. When they see us as representatives of Christ in the world. As you know, I'll be going to Africa as Chelsea is as well. I'll be joining the machine gun preacher um, in South Sudan um, in July. You know, and then sometimes there's optical illusions. People look at something and they see one thing when they first look at it. When you first look at it, you might think Coca-Cola, right? But when you examine it a little bit closer, it's the real thing. It's Jesus Christ, right? And sometimes people have to take a second look at us, right? And, and be able to see, but hopefully that they see Jesus Christ at a second glance by the way that we go and minister and, and others. You know, but these are our holy clothes. This is God has created us in a unique way. We have been created in His image. Just as God said in the very beginning, in the beginning, let us create man in our image. God didn't say in His image. He says in our image. God is uniquely Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we are created, as it reminds us in our scriptures today, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, 
with all of your soul and all of your strength. Christ and the scriptures and, and Moses and others that wrote for us remind us to give it in three ways. Well, we can't just give mere lip service, but our hearts need to be changed. That we need to be in personal relationship for our soul, our, our, our strength and, and, our, and our heart as we give to Christ. As we're reminded, as I have the one verse, if I could choose one verse to, to plant on my body, is that John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the hallmark of why we gather here each and every day as we go and we ride with God. Stay in love with God. We got it. All right, last week BJ was here and she shared with you the birthday of the church and, and, and reminded about those flames, whether they're good flames or bad flames, as, as we share the love of God in the world. But all of it reminds us as we gather together to stay in love with God. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. We celebrate the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. But there's not three gods, as it says in Deuteronomy as we read in our first call to worship today. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. One God revealed in three persons. We can look for different symbols on how do we explain that trinity. Or the pumpkin church, many people call it, right? So when we pass out our candy corn, they have those three distinct parts on it. But yet, they're, they're one, right? So we're reminded of the Trinity with the candy corn. Or as we're riding around, we see people with tattoos. And, and, and you know, you see these rough, burly guys around with big tattoos on their body, right? But many of them are religious tattoos and different symbols to remind them that I belong to, to Christ. But all of it reminds us all to... That was me. Stay in love with God. Okay, yeah, you only said about 50 more times. Okay. John Wesley said that his heart was strangely warmed and after he received the Holy Spirit, it, his mission work changed, right? And he was able to transform the world. Our symbol that we have in our banner out by McDonald's out there has this symbol on it. It says, follow Jesus, make disciples, transform the world. We have a threefold mission, just as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have a threefold mission here in the church to follow Jesus to make disciples and to transform the world. If you only do one part, you're missing out on, on all the rest. You need to do all three of them in order to fulfill the Great Commission, the unto of God. Right, we just had our annual conference, general conference, and much debate on where do we go as a church, right? And so they tabled a lot of items and said, we're not going to decide anything, but let's not get sidetracked with human sexuality and other things, but let's stay in love with God. But, but John Wesley gives us three different rules as we're learning about again today. Right, The first one was to do no harm. One of the reasons they made the decisions at General Conference was they didn't want to do any harm. They didn't want to make decisions that were going to harm and split the church. Right, Remind them to do good. Let's focus on the good that we do and not the things that we disagree. Right, And if we do so, we'll stay in love with God. We don't want to harm people and make them turn away from God by what the church does, but we want to remind people to stay in love with God. Stay in love with God. John Wesley once said these words, I'm not afraid that people called Methodists should ever cease to exist, either in Europe or in America, but I'm afraid unless they should only exist as a dead sect, having the form of religion without the power. And this undoubtedly will, call, will be the case unless they hold fast to both doctrine, spirit, and discipline with which they first set out. Are we becoming a dead sect or are we on fire? Are we filled with the spirit, right? We want to be a church that's alive and filled with the spirit and not a dead sect. He said, indeed nothing will avail without prayer. Pray whether you can or cannot. When you are cheerful and when you are heavy, still pray. Pray with many or few words, or with none at all, and you will surely find an answer of peace. Stay in love with God. We're getting ready to build our new building, and it's halfway up, or our frame's up, half the roof is up. But as we build it, we need to remind you that we as a church here at Centenary, just as we had on the mountain at General Conference, to do no harm. We should be doing good. We should attack each other within the church. 
right? We need to support one another, whether we agree or different agree. Some people like local missions, some people like global missions. Some people want to reach out to the kids in the neighborhood, some people want to do adult ministry. We all could, we could do all of the above and still be the church, but we don't want to harm people in the process, but rather we want to do good, right? And finally, we also want to stay in love with God. And as you saw those words fall down, the word love comes across in that wooden cross out in front of our building, right? Because that is what love is. For God so loved the world, as I have on the back of my jacket there, that God is love. And we are called to be loved as well. And the spirit of Pentecost will, will come alive. John Wesley, when I, I he, he has this quote about dreaming, just as we're calling our new building the Dream Center. I continue to dream and pray about a revival of holiness in our day that moves forth in mission and creates authentic community in which each person can be unleashed through the empowerment of the Spirit to fulfill God's creation, creational intentions. John Wesley worked these words at the end of the 1700s. These are the same words that guide us even today. We dream for a time of a holy revival here in Conway to guide us and make a difference in all of our community that we may stay in love with God. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strengths. These commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. They're not just ten commandments that we hang on a, on a home interior plaque, but they need to be in our heart. With our heart, our soul, and our strength, we are called to obey Him that we will stay in love with God. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Right? We just had a baby that was dedicated to the Lord today. We're to impress these words upon this child. If all we do is sprinkle her and she doesn't hear the word the rest of her life, what good is it? Right? But we just made a pledge that we'll do all that we can to support this child, that she will come to know Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, that she'll own this gift that has been given to her today. Talk to him about it. When you sit down at home, when you walk, wherever you go, share them. Just like my patches on my vest, when I ride, we share the Word of God wherever we may go, and we do so with our children, that we may stay in love with God. Vacation Bible School is coming up. We want to reach out. And our theme this year is Joy in Jesus. And, and some of the songs are, are like hip-hop songs and other things that, to represent our community and our neighborhood that looks much different than we look on Sunday morning as we reach out to them. But we want to remind children to stay in love with God and reach out and share the joy. He says, write them on your door frames, on the house and your gates to be able to share these scriptures that we can... Right? We have different signs. Signs are all around us, right? I put our sign out there saying on the eighth day, God created a Harley and invited Harley riders to be able to come and, and join us today. You know, I make signs to welcome different people and put them in the neighborhood, you know, to represent our dream center and make people to reach out. Vacation Bible school signs to hopefully invite people to be able to come in. But I found some other church signs that weren't on our board, but I just kind of like them. So our church is like fudge. Sweet with a few nuts, right? <laughs> you can choose if you're on the sweet side or the nutty side, you know, whatever side. Yeah. Your name may be on a bottle of Coke, but is it in the book of life? You know, you know I like Coca-Cola even though I haven't had a real Coke for a, a really long time. But we want our name in it. I put this sign out there on Father's Day uh, last year, and people went... Wow! The nuts came out and my phone rang off the hook and said, How dare you give out free beer in the church? You're ruining the church. This has got nothing to do with holiness. We had root beer up front, right? And our sermon was, Think like a man. Men don't want to talk about feelings and love. They want to drink a beer. They want to ride their bikes. They want to talk about the weather and football, right? Jesus called fishermen. He called rugged real men, right? And we want to reach out to real men, right? But we don't want to just give out free beer, right? We have something greater than that because we can remind people to stay in love with God. But we do whatever it takes to get them, right? And we go where they are and we share that love with them. We wrote messages on our pillars before our walls were going up when we didn't have a roof out there and out in the Dream Center. Cora wrote, For God so loved the world, John 3.16, Cora wrote the most important verse of the Bible on the pillar. 
right? And others, Matthew chapter 22. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for, for warfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope, right? From Jeremiah. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And we have that on our victory plaque, on our victory plaques up here, and our, our, our biker signs I put up front today to remind us to have no fear. And Nancy wrote from Psalm 118, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. And there's many more verses that we wrote on those pillars. But these are the signs on our doorpost, these messages of love, as we remind others to... Say love with God. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The same words that were quoted in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Jesus just simply repeats in the New Testament to remind us to love God with our heart, our soul, and our mind, and as our banner reminds us on the window today, to love our neighbors as ourselves in the Gospel of Luke, that we may my right? other wife, Phoenix, um, who, who my nurse for my, my doctor I've been going to, she's come there a couple Sundays, and she wrote about the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, and long-suffering. The fruits of the Spirit. We need to be a fruitful church. My very first Sunday, I passed out juicy fruit gum. And remember that we need to live that, that fruitful taste in others uh, that satisfies as we go to be a fruitful people. You know, we have our... I had my apple up here. Where'd it go? Lost my apple. Lots of apple. Anyhow, we, we know to be a fruitful people, and we as a church, we want to practice radical hospitality, passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and servant, extravagant generosity. This is what it means to be a fruitful church and to be able to grow, just as Chelsea and others are taking risk-taking missions and going into the world. Intentional faith development as we have vacation Bible school and Bible studies and other things. Passionate worship. We want to be involved and allow the Spirit to move among us. To practice radical hospitality. To go and, and share those cups of cold water in Jesus' name. And to give extravagantly. Not just giving our leftover, but giving our tithes and offerings. And be able to give that God's work may be done around the world that we may. Say in love with God. John Wesley said, earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can, right? We took a bold step. We we're borrowing you know, a lot of money to build this new building, but we have to be able to pay for it. But if everybody in the church gives, we have 130 members. If every, every member that's a member of the church gave $1,000, we'd pay our building off, right? We could do that. Could you give $1,000 over the next two years or three years extra above and beyond what we give now? If everybody did it, the building would be paid off in two years. Right? We were able to give, to give and keep on giving and to make a difference that we may say love with God. Our ministry to the poor becomes the means of grace by which God does His work of holiness in us. It becomes a way by which God perfects us in His love and to make us Christ-like. This is what sets us on fire, right? As we're able to go, whether it's Martha Circle supporting Shepherd's Table, Backpack Buddies, and CAP, and the Epworth Children's Home, and Friendship Medical Center, or we're taking up special offerings to wipe out malaria as they raised over a million dollars. And they it used to be, before the Methodists started this campaign a year ago, every minute a child died from malaria. Right now, it's every two minutes. They cut that in half. It's still way too many children dying around the world because they don't have a mosquito net. But we're making a difference. In one year, we're able to cut that in half. If we keep on giving and keep on making a difference, we can eradicate some of these diseases around the world. To be able to support the bread of life as Chelsea is going, or as I go to South Sudan, or as we reach out the street region to the homeless in our community, we're called to go. John Wesley said, the world is my parish. It wasn't about a building. It's about the world. And we're called to go in his footsteps and to make a difference. At General Conference, the theme was, therefore, go. Right? Sometimes we got distracted about issues of human sexuality and how we define marriage and, uh, and other different things. And I think we need to hold strong to our biblical principles. But most importantly, we need to go and make disciples and share love of Christ 
in the world, so that we may sing of God. First Kings chapter 8, as we read, it says, May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us or forsake us. May he turn our hearts to him to walk in obedience to him and keep the commands, decrees, and the laws that he gave our ancestors. We're not called to abandon the laws of the past. We're not called to go contrary to Scripture, where we're called to walk according to the laws of God. Right? It doesn't change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We don't need a new book to guide us of how we should live. We don't need a Supreme rural Court ruling or a president to tell us how we ought to live. We have a God that loved us, that He gave us instructions. He tells us to live according to these ways. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to be able to move on to become a holy people. <laughs> And if we walk in obedience, that we may stay in love with God. You have nothing to do but to save souls. Therefore, spend and be spent on this work. And go not only to those that need you, but those that need you the most. It is not your business to preach so many times and to take care of this or that society, but to save as many souls as you can, to bring as many sinners as possible you can to repentance. This is what John Wesley gave his, his circuit riders as they went out into the world. Don't forget our primary task, or as we learned in our Bible study, don't forget the bread Max Lakeda said. But we're called to save souls. And if we're going to save souls, we need to go where there's lost souls. Why do I ride? Because I like it. But why do you go out and you reach out that you may minister to people in a, in a, in a world? Why do we go halfway around the world? The, the people who, in, in desert areas of Africa and Benin and different places, we go that we may save souls, that they may be a part of the kingdom of God. This is our primary task as a church of believers to save the God. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God be with you, who can be against you? If God is with you, who can be against you? We go out. Are all of them together stronger than God? Do not be weary of well-doing. We will be wore out by men and devils. Some people wear us out because they say, we don't want to do this, right? We, we don't believe in that cause, right? And they beat us up. Right? And they're tossing stones at us, right? Right? But we're called to be a mission. Who are we to stop someone from going? And, and going and sharing and loving. Right? But we're going to come up against opposition. Even the disciples, they were all persecuted and killed for their faith. We too are called to go, nevertheless, against the odds and do the right thing. To do good, to do no harm, and stay in love with God. John Wesley, as he said, we learn from our ancestors. I copied a bunch of quotes from him for the end of our sermon here. Says, the essential part of Christian holiness is giving the heart wholly to God. We have to give our whole heart, not half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly, all in, as we support and love others, as we stay in love with God. I'm not afraid of you doing too little but too much. Do a little at a time that you may do the more. Uh, um, Mother Teresa says we can do no great things, only small things with love, right? As we reach out small things with love. And then Bob says sometimes he gets too many irons in the fire and he goes in too many different directions, right? But he wouldn't have to do that if everybody else stepped up into their part, right? Everybody needs to give of themselves and give a little bit more. If everybody does one thing well for the kingdom of God, it's going to make a difference. You don't need a full-time minister. If everybody gives an hour a week to be able to make a difference, we can be the church and make a huge impact. Jesus called 12 people and he changed the world. We have much more than 12 people today if we go and share love, do one good thing and do it well and stay in love with God. Labor to be not almost but altogether Christian, or not only an outside but an inside Christian, the same in the heart and in life. Not just mere lip service, but a change of heart can transform the world if we stay in love with God. Be, but be aware that you not be swallowed up in books. An ounce of love is worth a pound of knowledge, right? I've been losing an average of a, over a pound a day since I started my diet, right? And, it, and it, it's an amazing thing how much a pound is. But you think it passes, I, I lose a pound a day I've been, been averaging, right? But 
you know, a, an ounce of love is worth more than a pound of knowledge. If we have faith the size of a mustard seed, we can speak to the mountain and tell it to be moved, right? And to be able to change things. The people gathered in Portland, Oregon, upon the mountain, to gather to talk about our other book, the Book of Discipline, right? And mountains were moved. Maybe everything's are on hold right now, but right now we're still holding far to, to what we believe, right? And we have some time to heal, and the time to grow, and the time to be able to go. But we need to hold on to the one book that, that we may... Stay in love with God. One of the greatest evidences of God's love to those that love Him is this, to send them affliction with grace to bear them. God doesn't promise us once we're baptized, once we become members, that we're going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. He says you're going to be tempted just as Jesus was in the wilderness. Jesus went out in the wilderness for 40 days. He was tempted in every way we were. But He was able to stop the evil one by quoting the Word of God and turning him away. We can defend ourselves. God gives us suffering that we can produce endurance. Endurance leads to hope, and hope produces character, right? And we learn from our mistakes and the trials that we go through that we may learn to stay in love with God, even during the rough time. Always pray when we have no other object than God's love and the desire of pleasing God. Some people say, I don't know how to pray, right? It's just a desire to please God and to be in relationship with Him. This is prayer. Even unspoken prayer, if we are in communion in relationship with God, you may be able to stay in love with God. We should be rigorous in judging ourselves and gracious in judging others. It's not our job to judge everybody else, but we are to be faithful and stay in love with God. One of the principal rules of religion is to lose no occasion of serving God. And since He is invisible to our eyes, we are to serve Him in our neighborhood, which He receives as if done to Himself in person standing visibly before us. When we reach out to our kids for vacation Bible school, or we reach out to a homeless person, or we reach out to those people in our own community, it's like we're reaching out to Christ. Right? We reach out and we do it that we may stay in love with God. Let your words be the genuine picture of your heart that you may stay in love with God. A Methodist Christian is one who loves the Lord his God with all his heart, with all of his soul, with all of his mind, with all of his strength. God is the joy of his heart and the desire of his soul, which continually crying, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth whom I desire besides thee. My God and my all, Thou art the strength of my heart and my portion forever. He is therefore happy in God. He is always happy as having in Him a well of water springing up into everlasting life and overflowing His soul with peace and joy. Perfect love, living now, cast out fear, He rejoices evermore. Yea, His joy is full and all His bones cry out. Blessed be the God of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy, have begotten me again unto a living hope of an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, reserved in heaven for me. That we all, this reminds us to stay in love with God. John Wesley gives us these three simple rules. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Good guiding principles that we can renew on this special day. May we be reminded that prayer may be said to the breath of our spiritual life. That as we reach out, may we continue to stay in love with God. Now let us stand and sing our closing hymn, Behold a Broken World, number 426. As we sing, if you'd like to come and touch the water in remembrance of your own baptism, you may take a heart in remembrance of this day that you are reminded to stay in love with God. Behold a broken world, number 426.